The next step to understanding rational functions is to identify vertical asymptotes. So to do that, we're going to factor them completely and reduce our common factors. We're going to set reduced denominator equal to zero and solve. And then for any zeros of the denominator C, X equals C is a vertical asymptote. In case you've forgotten, an asymptote is a line drawn as a dotted line that a part of a graph gets closer and closer to but never intersects as it goes toward or approaches infinity. Sometimes I like to fondly call these Gandalf lines because the graph shall not pass. Okay, let's look at these examples. They are still looking familiar from earlier. Let's go ahead and factor completely. So the numerator doesn't factor. I'm just going to put it in parentheses though so I remember that, you know, that is a binomial factor by itself. It just doesn't have any other factors. The denominator factors into x minus 3, x plus 3. We saw that earlier in example 2. All right, now if we have any identical factors on the numerator and denominator, we can reduce them or cancel them out and reduce them to 1 so that they go away out of the problem. Well, that's not the case. We can't reduce anything. So in this case, we have two asymptotes. We have one at x equals 3, and we have x equals negative 3. I don't know if you noticed this, but from example 2, we have the same answers. Only in example 2, we were finding domain, and we said that x could not equal those numbers. Now we're saying x does equal those numbers, and that's because these are the vertical asymptotes. It's where the asymptotes go and where the graph does not exist. So therefore, the vertical asymptotes and the asymptotes are indeed very closely related. Okay, next one, we would factor and reduce. Well, this doesn't factor, and this doesn't factor. Um, this also, so then after it doesn't factor or reduce, we would just set that equal to zero and solve it. But that means that we would get imaginary answers. So there are no real solutions. And since there's no real solutions, there's also no vertical asymptote. All right, next example. So in our next example, we have x plus 3, and then we can factor the denominator into x plus 3, x minus 3. Here's a good example of where we do have reducible factors. So this x plus 3 and that x plus 3 can both cancel out. That doesn't leave us with 0 in the numerator. It leaves us with 1 because it hasn't really canceled. It's reduced. It's become something divided by itself, which equals 1. So that gives us 1 divided by x minus 3. That means we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. Well, that's weird. We still said in example 2 that the domain did not exist at 3 or negative 3. So how come we have a vertical asymptote at 3, but we don't have one at negative 3 if the domain doesn't exist at negative 3? Well, we're going to learn more about that in another section, section 3, I believe. But we have what we call a hole at the point where x equals negative 3. All right, next we have tricky rules to remember for identifying horizontal asymptotes. We have three different situations for horizontal asymptotes. Suppose that our rational function r of x is equal to p of x over q of x. Then, if the degree of p of x is less than the degree of q of x, then, dun dun dun, our horizontal asymptote will be at y equals 0. Horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So just right on the x-axis. Okay, if the degree of p of x is equal to the degree of, P, of Q of X, so we have equal degrees in those two polynomials in the top and the bottom of our rational function, then the horizontal asymptote is a little bit trickier to identify. 
the horizontal asymptote will be the leading coefficients of each polynomial. So it'll be y equals the leading coefficient of our top polynomial. So we're identifying that as p of x divided by the leading coefficient of our denominator polynomial, which we are identifying as q of x. All right. So if it's equal to the degree, then that's what's going to happen. Just trying to make this, trying to make this just look a little better, equal to, I'm not figuring out how to make my line a little shorter. Made it skinnier. Weird. Okay, so we have less than, degree on the top is less than the degree on the bottom, horizontal at y equals zero. Equal degrees, so equal highest exponent, we take those leading coefficients, make a fraction out of it, and that is our horizontal asymptote. Okay, the third situation is if we have the degree is greater in the numerator than it is in the denominator, then there's no horizontal asymptote. Um, no horizontal asymptote, but there could be what we call an oblique or a diagonal asymptote, but we're not going to learn about that until section three. All right, so let's practice this. Example number five. Identify the horizontal asymptotes of the graphs of the following rational functions. Okay, so question one, we have our numerator, which is degree one. How do we know it's degree one? Because the highest exponent is one. There really is no exponent. There's an x, and so the x would have a non-written or invisible exponent of one, making that a degree one. The denominator is degree 2, because it's a quadratic. So when we have the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, that's when our horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0. Okay, looking at our next example, you'll notice this one has a degree of 2. This one has a degree of one. So this time we have degree two over degree one. Well, that gives us the last case here, which means it would be no horizontal asymptote because the degree of P of X is going to be greater than the, P, the degree of Q of X. So we just say no horizontal. Okay, then for h of x, our leading coefficient is 3. Oh, wait, our leading, our numerator polynomial has a degree of 3. Degree 3. Our denominator also has a degree of 3. Even though it's not written in standard form, it's not listed first, so this is a little tricky. If you just look at that first term, it looks like it's a constant and it would be degree zero, but it's just out of order. So remember, back when we talked about polynomial functions in section 2.1, or two, maybe it was 2.2, when we talked about degree and standard form and leading coefficients and all that, the leading coefficient is the leading, the coefficient on the leading term. And the leading term is the one with the highest exponent that defines the degree. 
So in this case, we have p of x degree is equal to the q of x degree. When that happens, we have the second item here for our horizontal asymptote. So in this case, it would be y equals the leading coefficient in the numerator, which is 6, divided by the leading coefficient in the denominator, which is negative 2, which gives us a horizontal asymptote of y equals negative 3. I wouldn't just list negative 3. I wasn't going to just put a box around that. That's why I rewrote the whole thing. y equals negative 3 because it's an asymptote. It's a line. We've got to have the equation of a line, and the y equals is what tells us it's horizontal. Instead of, like in the last example, example 4, we had x equals because we were finding the vertical lines for those asymptotes.